Hello folks, Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for taking the time to check out today's tips and tricks video. So the month of May 2019 has been pretty darn busy for us. However, uh, we want to get back into the swing of things, getting back to normal and getting into summertime. I know people are working on building and creating some awesome displays for their 2019 season. So let's talk a little bit about sequencing for a little bit. Um, so yeah, over the winter time, over the spring, uh, many enhancements have been added into X lights, and I want to share with you uh, the some uh, interesting insights that have been added into X lights that should help you uh, easily and quickly create uh, some interesting effects for your display. But before that, this video is brought to you today by the PPD Sequence Club. Our Sequence Club offers huge discounts and saves members thousands on pixels, props, signage, controllers, and more. Not only that, you receive one professional sequence each month. So if you're interested in getting some awesome sequences, visit pixelprodisplays.com and sign up for the original PPD Sequence Club membership. So what I want to do today is I want to share with you the uh, the kind of some I don't want to say it's a secret, but it's it's a functionality that was added in, and uh, I really haven't had time to talk about it, but it's been very very useful. So we all know what the morph is, and we all know uh, what the layers uh, setting box is. It, it allows you to mess with the quote unquote the buffer. That's a word that gets thrown around a lot, uh, and what. What uh, these two have in common now is you can literally grab the buffer and you can see it happening live here. Whenever I move the buffer, you're actually moving uh, where the effect is being uh, displayed. Here, let me let me just turn on with a different color for the background so you can see it. So you can see that as I move the buffer around here, let me let me actually move the the morph. So you can see, as I move the morph around, you can see that the buffer actually puts it in a different spot. Well, for a long time, that was never the case with the uh, morph effect. But now, actually, you can. You can move it any direction you want. It, it does work a little different. It doesn't hold its size, and it can hold its size, and that's not a big deal. You can't double-click on it and make it full size or anything, but that would be kind of neat. But you can go back over here to your morph settings, and you can go to full sweep up, and that gets it back to full size. Um, but we have some functionalities that are very similar between these two. So first of all, if you hold, uh, if you hold the um, control key, control key on your keyboard, uh, when you do, you get this arrow left and right. And so now what X lights will do is it'll allow you to scroll only left and right, not up and down. It just allows you to go left and right. So that's functionality number one. Now, if I leave up on this keypad, it, uh, if I leave it like this, it's going to stick like this. This is the size it's going to stay, just so you're aware of that. So in the buffer tab, we have the exact same functionality. Hold the control key down. You can move it left to right. Now, your arrows don't change. They don't they don't mock like this, the arrows left and right. But if, if you hold down the control key, you can only scroll left and right. Even though I'm moving up and down right now, it's only scrolling left and right, and you can see that in the preview window there. So uh, to, to recenter the buffer, just double click on the buffer. Um, and, and then the other functionality is the ability to lock the direction going up and down or north and south. So if you hit the control and the shift key, you get the crosshairs changed to an arrow up and down. And now you're able to go up and down. And you can't go left to right. Even though I'm trying to go left to right, you can't go left to right. So this really makes this very versatile, uh, as well as in the buffer settings. Um, so if you come over here, you can shift control and move up and down. So you can see that over in the effect, how it is only moving up and down. And you can't move left and right. So believe it or not, this is a wonderful thing, especially whenever you want your buffer to be a specifically certain size. So you want the effect to, to, to appear here on the buffer, and then you want it to be directly to the left or right. Hold the control key down, and you can slide it to the left or right. And then what you can do is, and I know this might not look like it's helpful at the moment, um, but if we, if we go to our morph, we copy it, and we paste it, now we have a, a two-layer morph. I'm going to change the color just for game's sake here so you can see it. And then what we'll do is we'll come over here and we'll change. We'll hit Control and we'll move it left and right. So now we have a blue morph going left and right 
uh, not left and right, but moving left and right on that horizontal plane there, and it's locked. Now, if I want to go up and down, north and south, I just hold the shift key down. So, so that that kind of uh, allows us the the flexibility. Now, finally, if you don't do anything, you can move this wherever you want. Okay, you don't have, but if you want to lock in the either the X or the Y axes, you just have to activate by hitting the control and the shift key. So with the with kind of the last functionality I want to share with you in today's video, uh, I'm going to lay down the morph effect and I'm going to show you why. Uh, not so much that this in the buffer tab, they, they work very similar now, but why this in, in the uh, effects assist window is so very powerful. Uh, for many years, we have, we've known the morph effect to be able to do certain things. And if we click the uh, letter M, that's the morph uh, button. And then we come in here and we can use the sliders to, to move things. We can use the sliders if that's more logical. But I like the physical or visual representation that the uh, effects assist has. And everybody sees these awesome little ribbon things um maybe they look like this okay nice and nice and horizontal let's make that color very very noticeable something that stands out so there we go um so we've got this this beautiful little what i i like to call it a ribbon and the morph effect can can duplicate uh and uh, send up the tree a number of morphs and what we can do is we can change this is called a repeat over here in the options and you can repeat it let's say four times now if you want to have a skip in between them like to have spaces you can put a number in here you can move the slider and it will add some spaces in so now you have that beautiful ribbon effect that you can create and you can stagger them and it kind of pauses them so that it appears to be wrapping the whole way around the tree. Okay, this is awesome, and this is nice, and this is beautiful for when you're sequencing. But whenever I want to share a, an effect with somebody, um, your tree may not be the same size my tree is. And this all works fantastically on your home display. But whenever I want to share a sequence or share a preset, I have to physically build this uh, a different way and thanks to the developers they have added in this functionality and this is what we're going to show you so we'll hit the letter M for morph I'm going to get rid of all of my extras here I'm going to set them all to zero and now I'm back to one and this is where the functionality has been added in that is very helpful now when you select a morph and you create this specific whatever over here in your effects assist window the next thing that you do is you can just lay down another morph. It's going to uh, copy in the in the uh, in the settings. You can click and drag, or you can. I just hit the letter M for a shortcut. And now what we can do is we can hold the control key and the shift key down, and we can manually move this. Now it won't move left and right, and that's why it's locked in place, so I don't lose my size uh, that I'm looking for. And I can lay it down. Look, I can hit morph, hit the M button, scroll up. Place it. Oh, no, it means go up a little bit more. Eyeball it. Good. Let's go do another one. Let's go up a little more. Perfect. Morph again. Bam. That looks good. Bam. Here we go. Bam. And the last one. I think there's room for one more. Oh, look at that. Look how it's kind of squished up there. How does that look? Let me move it down a little bit. Maybe fix it a little bit. How about that? Yeah, that looks kind of good. And if I want it to chase, all I have to do is select them all, hold the alternate button, go down to the bottom right, and slightly pull, and I'll get that little bit of a chase effect. So now I'm getting that same effect as I created originally over here on this one. But now if I share this effect with you all, then you're able to get the exact one for one look, whether it's on a tree that is 16 by 50, or a mega tree that has 32 by 100. Uh, the effect will work the exact same way. So uh, if I were to put this on a smaller tree, this would be a little more scrunched together. If I were to put this on a bigger tree, this would be uh, not as spaced out as nicely as it is. So um, that's your tips and tricks for today, folks. Remember, if you haven't done yet so, please hit that big red subscribe button. Like the video if you liked it. Share it with your crazy Christmas light friends if you loved it. And don't forget, there are a ton of huge discounts that you can save on your current controller props, or controllers, so your props, your builds. 
Everything that you're doing for your 2019 show, we can help you save money through the PPD Sequence Club with our vendor discounts and all the other perks for becoming the original PPD Club member. So thank you for joining us, folks. We'll see you in the next video.